Ultimate Rares have always been, in my opinion, the most polarizing of all the rarities in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, what I mean by that is that it, there tends to be two different camps of people in relation to Ultimate Rares. The first one being that they love them. They want to play Ultimate Rares in every deck. They try to get every card in Ultimate Rare. They collect really garbage cards that come in Ultimate Rare just because they look cool. And the second camp of people are the ones that avoid Ultimate Rares at all costs. They feel that they're too flimsy, they look silly, that you can't see the picture. And uh, I am in the first camp. I think you guys probably know that because uh, I have played many decks in the past solely for the fact that they looked good with Ultimate Rares. And uh, Crystal Beast come to mind, Destiny Hero Diamond Dude comes to mind, cards that maybe aren't super powerful or super competitive but look really good in Ultimate Rare. So, you can expect that I was pretty disappointed in September of 2015 when Konami announced that they would no longer include Ultimate Rares in main booster releases. Now, we're going to talk about sort of the history behind Ultimate Rares a little bit later on, but the first thing I wanted to address is actually the title of this video, and that I think Konami is making up for this Ultimate Rare situation by making the modern cards, and possibly <laughs> the cards in main booster sets, all sort of look like ultimate rares or share the attributes that made ultimate rares kind of special now the first instance of this is in the maximum crisis special edition where we had two preview cards um boogie trap and then the super long name that i'm never going to pronounce correctly um i guess i could pronounce it correctly i just don't want to memorize it and uh, anyway, so these cards were spell cards, they were super rare, so that's pretty normal. But what wasn't normal, and what a lot of people thought were misprints, was that the, uh, the spell card icon in the top right-hand corner is holographic. And uh, people weren't really sure, like I said, if this was a misprint, because the cards in the Maximum Crisis Special Edition, those didn't have that with them. Um, like, the, the Maximum Crisis packs themselves were perfectly fine. So it's kind of hard to tell if it was like a one-time deal. And this has happened in the past, where this is like an accident. The one that I think of first is that there was the ultra rare regeki that uh has a uh, the spell icon that's super rare and that was from a long time ago and uh that that holographic spell card icon makes it look really special people sometimes refer to it well before the ultimate rare regeki came out people referred to it as the quote-unquote ultimate rare regeki um even though it wasn't technically an ultimate rare and uh but people didn't know if they were going to do that ever again however in the new minerva set which is battles of legend lights revenge it looks like all the cards are like that. And uh, I'll, I'll throw some pictures on here. Uh, obviously, this set is being released now, so you can get the cards yourselves. But uh, these these were pictures from the leaks that originally happened. I have Exiton Knight and Minerva. So we have an Ultra Rare and a Secret Rare. And you can see on both of them that the, uh, the rank stars or the level stars and the attribute icon are all holographic. And uh, this looks especially cool, in my opinion on the uh the secret rare foiling because the uh the stars and the attribute aren't just holographic they have the the secret rare lines in them and uh konami isn't accidentally doing this on an entire set i think that's like the main point i want to make here is that you could chalk up the maximum crisis special edition promos to an accident but you can't uh then say that the battles of legend entire set was printed by accident in that rarity and the important thing here that I really want to make sure you guys realize is that neither of these rarity changes were announced on the uh, the main pages on the official Yu-Gi-Oh! website, which leads me to believe, and I honestly believe this, uh, this is going to be how cards look going forward. And uh, I th we'll confirm this or deny it in Code of the Duelist. That'll be the next release. I suppose even the... Uh, the link summoning structure deck could confirm or deny this, but really I'm going to be waiting for Code of the Duels to see if this is true or not. But uh, we've now had two sets in a row where they've released cards that have the foiling in the top right-hand corner where before they never have had that. And uh, I think that's cool because well, one of the things that made Ultimate Rares so interesting is that they, they had that foiling on their uh, level and attribute where other cards didn't. Now, Gold Rares sort of did, and uh, but Gold Rares are fucking ugly, so like who cares what Gold Rares look like? Um, but Ultra Rares haven't really done this, Secret Rares haven't done this. It was sort of unique to Ultimate Rares and Gold Rares. Um, but once again, we, we don't talk about Gold Rares because they're garbage. But uh, Ultimate Rares, they, they, that was one of the things that made them unique. And the other thing that made them unique is that they, the, uh, the foiling on the, the card artwork was stamped on there. Or I don't actually know the specific manufacturing process that goes along with creating a Yu-Gi-Oh card. 
I'm sure someone in the comments does. Maybe they can enlighten me about how Yu-Gi-Oh cards are made. But uh, I'm assuming that that was either stamped or etched in or imprinted on. And uh, I that was probably pretty expensive. And we have information to back this up as well. Um, I'm going to show you a, a paragraph from the 2015 article that Konami made. Um, where they were talking about how they were going to change the pack setup going forward. This was a big announcement because this announced that uh, Ultimate Rares and Ghost Rares would be gone from the game. And then we would have a holographic card in every single pack and there'd be two secrets of box. And it changed a lot. But uh, let's read through this. So it says, this is right after they say that there's going to be a super rare in every pack. So they say, that's a lot of extra foil we'll be manufacturing. So something's going to give to make room. And then they say in parentheses, otherwise we'd have to raise the price of packs, which... Just as an editor's note here, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's kind of BS. Um, I don't think that the uh, <laughs> having holos in every pack and making an, one ultimate rare box would really break the bank for Konami, a multi-million dollar company. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. Um, they then say, but we figured out that we can increase the foil rates while keeping booster packs steady by removing some of the hard-to-get foil variants from regular boosters. Then they go on to say, ultimate rares are now come exclusively from Astro Packs you can get from official st tournament store events. Then they have in parentheses some stuff about the future of Astro Packs, which we now know are OTS packs. And uh, then they say, we're also removing Ghost Rares from the regular booster sets. We're not sure if we'll include Ghost Rares and other products in the future. It's possible. Ghost Rares are really expensive to make, and we think everyone will be happier with getting a foil card in every pack rather than one in 288 chance at a Ghost Rare. Now, we now know with hindsight that uh, it looks like Ghost Rares are not going to be in the TCG for the foreseeable future. I mean, the OCG still has them, and they look really good. Uh, Ghost Rares are, I mean, n noticeably, I don't have the numbers because there's no way I can get them, but I would assume that Ghost Rares are noticeably more expensive to make because you have to do so many different layers in the artwork, and then you still come up with a card that a lot of people aren't a fan of, um, and that scratches really easily, and I don't think they could fix that, which probably was really frustrating, spending so much money on a rarity that uh, people may or may not have liked, and also that scratched really easily. But I think the important thing here is that uh, Konami is sort of an announcing in that article that the main reason that they're not producing ultimate rares, is it's, it all just comes down to money. And uh, that makes sense. Konami, Konami's a business. And I think overall, I'm satisfied with how the game has turned out with uh, holographic cards in every pack. It basically means that supers and ultras will never be more than like $10 a piece. And uh, most secret rares go down, way down in value from what they would have been if you got one secret rare box. Um, we haven't had a situation with like a $200 secret rare in a long time since like Cosmo Dark Destroyer. And uh, I think that's good for the game overall. And uh, if, if cutting ultimate rares from the main sets was the thing that made this possible, I guess it's for the greater good. But Konami obviously knows that people like ultimate rares. And I think that's why we've noticed the, the ultimate rares, I mean, once again, in my opinion, the ultimate rares and the OTS packs have all been really killer. Um, I'm sure I'm wrong, and I'm sure I'm missing one that I can't think about that will like, suck terribly but in general i think like terror top was really good i think instant fusion was really good i think utopia was really good the, that's the most recent pack and i thought those were all really cool looking and uh so they're they're spending the time to make the ultimate rares that they do print look really fucking good but now it looks like they're going even further by making all of the secret super ultra rares have sort of the same look as the old school ultimate rares that people knew and loved and uh that's great you know if this is what all the new holographic cards look like, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I think that Link Monsters will look really cool in rarities as well. I've seen some pictures of like Ghost Rare Link Monsters and Ultra Rare Link Monsters, and they look really sick. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I don't know if I can find them a picture of them for this video, but I think they look very cool. And uh, I don't know. This, this kind of proves that the, the expensive part of printing Ultimate Rares was the... Um, the marking of them and the stamping them or however it's done, not the part that made it go on the, the stars and the attribute, which is, which makes sense because you'd have to have a unique stamp or however you do it for every single card that you're doing, where with the holographic, um, you can just make it always go where you want it to go and you don't have to have a unique one for every card. You can reuse the same stuff, so it makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say 
Um, but I don't know. How do you guys feel about this? Please let me know because I know a lot of people just don't like ultimate rares, and, and that's fine, and maybe you are happy that we don't get ultimate rares anymore. But I think this is a step in the right direction, and I'll like to see how long they'll keep this going. This might just be how uh, Link Summoning, how all those packs look, and I think I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, but I'm a big fan of ultimate rares, so uh, that's obviously how I'm going to feel. Um, anyway, though, I'll see you guys later. And, oh, yeah, I will be at... Uh, nationals or the the north american world championship qualifier this weekend feel free to say hi feel free to bring up cards if you want them autographed or signed or anything and uh yeah i'll see you guys later bye